Welcome to the daily wrap of the Australian Open Junior Championships. Day two today, we've got the tournament director once again, Francis Sawyer. Thanks for being with us. Uh, thank you, Adrian. So today, Francis, I'm going to put you on the spot. The number one seed from Russia, Dario Gavrilova. Yesterday, you preempted her success throughout the tournament. How did she go today? Well, Adrian, I stuffed up there. To tell you the truth, I gave everyone a, uh, the wrong steer. The world champion from last year, the US Open champion, Olympic champion, lost in the first round today. So to a qualifier from Japan, Konami Suji in straight sets. A fantastic effort by the, uh, the Japanese qualifier. Uh, so our number one seed, gone straight away. <laughs> well, that is disappointing, but everyone does make mistakes, Frankie. Any other matches today that we can report on? Any other significant results? Yeah, I think uh, from, well, the Australians did well. Uh, we had two boys that went through, Joey Swaysland and Luke Saville, uh, won their first round matches and uh, are, looking, are looking good. And we had one girl, our first girl uh, in Australia to make it through the second round, uh, Stephanie Stoich, uh, did very well and won her first round encounter in straight sets. Excellent. Any matches we can look forward to tomorrow, particularly with the Australians? Yeah, uh, our number two, uh, the Luke Saville, who won the Trialgan International last week, is playing the number two seed from Austria, Dominic Tien. So he's going to have a tough challenge uh, on his on his plate there tomorrow. Uh, there's also five other boys, including last year's runner-up, Sean Berman, uh, that will be in action, as well as Stephanie Stoich uh, in her second round clash. But she's going to have a tough one against the number five seed from Puerto Rico, uh, Monica Puig, who uh, is one of the favourites uh, left, but that doesn't mean much coming from me. Uh, but uh, she's also, uh, she won the Trelgan International last week. So just on the number one seed's departure today, you feel that opens it up for some other players to come through on the girls' side? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it opens up the draw, on that, especially that top half. Uh, but it also uh, opens up the draw for Lauren Davis, the third seed. Doesn't give her a, a tricky semi-final. Uh, to play, she was lined up to play uh, Daria in the semi-finals, uh, potentially to get if they both got through there. Um, so she's the big favourite now uh, for that draw to get through the final and perhaps the rest of the tournament. And what many of you may not know is that Frankie is the number one tournament director in the world, in my opinion anyway. You did a wonderful job in December uh, with the wild card and those sorts of things. I mean, you do so many tournaments throughout the year. Is there a difference with this one? And I mean, how do you feel at the moment having done so many tournaments recently? Yeah, yeah, you feel a bit, you feel a bit mentally drained, but hey, we uh, we love being here at the Australian Open. It's the, it's probably the highlight of the week, oh, the highlight of the year, uh, definitely for even just not just the players, but us as the organisers. So, uh, no, we're uh, we're very pleased to to be here and and to put on a great show for the first Junior Grand Slam of the year, and uh, and hopefully the players have a great experience here at Melbourne Park. Frankie, thanks again for being with us today. Yep. Thank you very much, Adrian. Look forward. And guys, tomorrow, day three, we'll be back with you for the daily wrap from the Australian Open here at Melbourne Park.